Welcome back to the family room. Another <clears throat> beautiful Wednesday. You changed uh, it. You normally say wonderful Wednesday. A wonderful. It's a beautiful Wednesday. Wonderful Wednesday. Wow Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday. I don't have any more W words. I was <laughs> no trying more to think W's. of one. The wonders of the Holy Spirit Wednesday. While we're getting started, let us know where you're watching from. We're in a great mood. We were just talking about all kinds of things that you guys don't get to ever hear before the countdown. Um, no, but uh, do you want to do the events this week? Sure, let's do it. The, coming up this week, we have uh, the study on the Holy Spirit continues every Monday night. If you are attending that, um, listen, the second week was bigger than the first week. Really? I, you know, I, was, I couldn't believe it, which I, in a good way. Uh, typically in Bible studies like that, y'all know, uh, the first week is a big introduction and everything, and then the second week kind of tails off. Uh, packed room. That's awesome. It, it was awesome. I mean, it was packed the first week. Yeah. Yeah, so and it's a good thing. Paul week. Pearson is teaching a study on the Holy Spirit every I Monday night Paul, at 6.30. You 6 said Paul Walker on Sunday. Right? That was not Paul Walker. <laughs> February the 1st, this Thursday, <laughs> Dining with Dignity. The very first one of February is going to be at 5.30 at Granada Street downtown. If you want to know anything about that, Jim and Kathy Lebinsky head that up. Uh, it's a wonderful outreach ministry, and it's a great thing to do downtown. Coming up this Sunday, mark your calendar, February the 4th. There is a volunteer brunch for our children's ministry. Do we appreciate our children's workers? Absolutely. We appreciate our children's workers. The, oops. And we are inviting others who are interested in children's ministry. Listen, uh, as quickly and the best way we can say it, our church right now is growing. Uh, the church is growing. The children's ministries are growing. So our children's volunteers, guys, if you're one of them, uh, say I am in the, in the chat and let us know. We're happy for it, your help, and we're thankful for it. But what we're trying to do is just let you know how much we appreciate you and kind of inform you all on some things that are coming up, what's going on, uh, a lot of good things. And if you're interested in serving in that ministry, we would love to have you. That is this Sunday, uh, right after church. If you have any questions about that, put them in the chat. Kelsey, I'm sure we'll get to it and answer them for you. Uh, but it's a busy time, and we've got a lot to talk about. We do, we do. First things first is that you finally growing your beard out after 40 years in ministry. <laughs> and we get to the important things first. Somebody actually <laughs> stopped me Sunday and said, okay, what's with the beard? And I was like, I, well, the family, our family is going to Blue Ridge in February, right? You're really going to use the excuse that it's cold and that's why you're No, doing no, it? no. Oh, I just like, said, come on. <laughs> we're going to Blue Ridge, uh, Georgia. And we're taking the whole family, and I just thought, let's do a mountain thing. Let's so we fit in with the country folk. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to let it grow it's out. Biblical, just to see. It's manly. You gotta keep it up. <laughs> How y'all doing in here? So I didn't want to be the guy that stood out, looked like I wasn't from there. But we're looking forward to it. Got a lot of you in the in the rooms in there. Glad I to love have it, you, especially uh, on YouTube. Yeah, let us know again where you're watching from. Um, let us know what you're really enjoying so far about uh, Family Church this year, or just the year in general. Um, there's several announcements that I cannot wait to make. Can we do a couple? I don't know. All right, we can do this because we <laughs> did it Sunday. Sunday, we at the end of our service, um, we made the announcement that, drum roll please, we have signed contracts for 60 acres of land. We have signed the contracts. The sellers have signed the contracts. We have an agreement for a purchase of 60 acres of land 10 miles from the front door of Family Church. Uh, we could not be more excited about that. I am, I am stoked beyond words. Out of my mind thinking about it. To watch it. and see what God is going to do through this church and through this region. This will set this church in motion for the next 50 years. Uh, I thought that this location here was going to be it, and I, we did. We truly thought this is it. You, could, you can't get any better than this, and God says, hold Hello, my <laughs> root beer. And, and he, <laughs> hold my communion cup. <laughs> hold my communion cup, and God just blew our minds again. So today, as a matter of fact, uh, shout out to St. John's Law, Douglas Burnett, a friend of mine, who was handling this for us, uh, the the contracts and all that kind of stuff, sent me a note today and said that he has applied to the county for the special use permit for the land. We have 10 days. In 10 days, we should know. <laughs> Kelsey's growing a beard, too. In 10 days, we should know if we can use that land. So 
if you are, y'all better shut up in the family room over there, Calvin. <laughs> it looks his age old. <laughs> Listen, you. you mullet wearing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Welcome to the family room. Welcome to the family room. We're we family. We over. can talk to each other like that. But 10 days, guys, we should know. So pray for us that we get all this done and get it going. Kathy Murray, we're happy that you're there. Welcome. With that, with the land, if you're not already partnered with us, uh, now is the perfect time. To part, oh, he's calling you. Mm -hmm. Nice to hear he hears you talking about him. Um, yeah, now is now is a perfect time to partner with us. Obviously, I know you mentioned you want to pay the land off yes. as quickly as possible. Uh, you always say you spell million M I L L I O N. Yes. Uh, if you take the M off and put a B, we can go a lot further with it because obviously the building um, is going to be much more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and my vision for it is that we are going to get the best of the best, not just you know Disney and ESPN. You know, you watch the NFL or baseball and how amazing those cameras are. There's no reason why uh, the world should have all of the best gadgets. We are trying to represent God to the world, to the nation globally. Uh, we're trying to represent it to my generation, the younger generation, the older generation. Everybody needs Jesus. And I'm a firm, firm believer that God deserves the best. And so I'm just, I am, I'm fully believing that this is going to be 100% state-of-the-art kind of facility. Um, we're going to start rolling out some video and pictures for Yeah, them. We're, we're working on a video, um, and we're going to be getting some more ideas. i got to set up the thing with um, the architects and site, site planners and all that stuff. It's a very exciting time, mm -hmm. uh, and if you're wondering, if you're worried about that, you don't think you have enough to give, any amount God will honor, any seed is a seed planted that will create a harvest. And if you're really wanting God to bless your business, the best way to do that is to realize that uh, everything comes through him. It's Amen. all his by design. He's the one that gives it to you. So it is important. It's biblical. And it's just a wonderful thing to give back to God. Mm -hmm. um, we're excited yeah. about it because, I mean, I'm believing that we're going to pay off this land right now. It is going to happen. Hey, Stacy, hi. I see you up there in Blue Ridge. We're coming up in February. Uh, we need you to write a check. We are going uh, to pay this land off as quickly as possible. And then we are already, you and I are in the process of uh, making plans to go see buildings so that we can put together. We want to do this building right. Sitting there on that land on 207 between Palatka and St. Augustine so that when people drive by, they recognize it. It'll be such a distinctive design. It'll have a really beautiful look to it inside and outside. Huge foyers so that people can fellowship when they get to church. Yes, uh, that is the one thing I regret with this building is there's not a big foyer. Uh, and, and, and Kelsey made the really uh, cool distinction this morning that in, in the whatever when we were talking. <laughs> Uh, if, you, if anybody was with us previously, you remember that the logo was the bridge for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And there's really not there's really not any churches between Palaka and St. Augustine. And so Family Church will effectively become the bridge between Palaka and St. Augustine. And it, it's just an amazing, exciting time. I was super excited imagining, you know, the, the fact that it was a farm on the land and, you know, they're just tilling the ground, getting it ready for us. Beautiful. It is, it, it's going to be phenomenal to watch what God does. A friend there. of mine is going to go out uh, over this weekend and do a drone uh, view for us so that we, we're going to try to get everything to you so that you guys can catch the vision with us. You can see it. You'll know what we're talking about. You'll know where it is. You'll know how you can help. You can pass it along to people that you know and just let everybody get involved in this um, so that it'll be, uh, it'll be an easy thing when all of us are pulling together uh, and doing doing this together. It's going to be fantastic. The video that we were shooting today, you're going to be rolling that out shortly. You've got yeah, a yeah, new a uh, idea that you're going to be launching here in, in house. I do, I do. And it involves, I'm not going to show it, but I'll give a teaser. We have some, for the ease of use and how easy it is to get involved, it's going to involve a simple card. wonderful white little card. Is there and anything on it? Ish. Not yet. Well, I can't see anything, so it's... No, right now it's just a simple blank white mystery. card. So but when it gets rolled out, I, it's I'm gonna excited be about it. It's going to be amazing. So, y'all, it is. We can't stress this enough. It's a very exciting time. People are asking, well, what, what about this building? What are we doing with this building? Um, brothers and sisters, we're going to hold on to this. Um, we believe that God gave us this location for a reason, so we're going to hold on to this. Um, we have the plans for the school on hold, so that when that comes to bear, 
we can actually start the school here. This could be Legacy Christian Academy right here and do all of that in this building so that we would have multiple locations. We would have this one and that one. So it's just a really, it's a God thing. There's a how, lot of endless possibilities. Yeah, how God's setting us all, all up that. for that. So, But anyway, I said uh, tonight is family room. We, we, we break down the sermon from Sunday. And I actually, I, I don't know if you heard it or not, but I gave a, a little thought that if you ever want to know what the preacher is going through, listen to his sermons. Sunday I preached on pressure. And I said that it's because uh, I feel this one. Uh, this is our, right here is our third location. And at each of the others, I never felt that the, the, the weight of the move, starting at South Whitney Street, going to King's Estate was easy. King's Estate to here was easy. This one is a huge step. Even at, for me at my age, 62 years, this is a big step. So I'm feeling this. But this is, yeah, this is the biggest, the biggest step. So you, you're preaching on pressure, pressure, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of pressure. Build cabins so you can have adult and youth church camps. That's a great idea. It also comes from um, wow. the wonderful giving yeah, within our all church. Of that. <laughs> but pressure. First Samuel chapter thirty, verses one through eight. The story of David and his men at Ziklag. How that they were um, in a foreign land. He was living in a foreign land on the run from King Saul. And when they came back from being rejected, the Philistine princes said we don't want you here, you, you've got to leave. When they were coming back, turns out that the Amalekites had raided their city, burned it to the ground, and took away their sons, their daughters, and their wives. Everyone was gone. And so David's men responded with, well, let's kill David. And so there was pressure, as I said Sunday, and if you guys were here and you have your, your quotes, start throwing the quotes in the, in the chat, the pressure... Is, is it has a way of revealing what's really inside of you yeah that's for sure stress uh stress is definitely the ultimate character reveal uh it can make <laughs> you or it can break you the, the first thing i wrote down uh was definitely a play on how you always said show me your friends and i'll show mm -hmm. you your future but you had said bad company corrupts good character yes and you know how true is that and then just just like that like anytime people will love to be with you when everything's good and easy and Woo. it's all nice, and Preach as soon that. as there is any hint of uh, you know disaster or chaos, so many people will turn yes. around. I mean, you look at Jesus. He, he told the disciples that they were going to mm -hmm. scatter um, soon, and when he was arrested, they just poof, all poofed right away. I and said Peter I, I, denied I, him. I mean, and he warned him about it. Mm -hmm. It's just it's it's human nature. It's <laughs> like we just get too afraid, and then all of a sudden, <clears> nope, I don't know that person, and you know. You know, I've never gone as far as wanting to kill somebody. Well, no, that's not true. Because I, not like literally kill somebody, but I can say like. Put that on a real kill. With, yeah, that, <laughs> that'll be clipped up. <laughs> if it puts family church on the Family map, church right. pastor said. Um, but no, you know, you, you imagine, and it's easy to relate to ish, uh, when you apply it to like a work aspect. And when you're in, mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, like a really busy time and, you know, like with line work and you're just knee deep in nasty mud or mm -hmm. down in a manhole that smells worse than anything you can imagine and it's raining and you're cold Stress, and all pressure. that and all you want to do is just go sit in the truck and, and, and you know wait out the rain but your foreman's you know cussing at you done. and yelling at you to get it done yeah I can relate with wanting to kill somebody in that moment mm -hmm. but it's a little bit different than you know what, what was going on with David I gave a play on that, that it's a contemporary application, that you don't really know someone until you've seen them under pressure. You know, we, we, we're all, we live in a polite society, a civilized, cultured society. So we have a, 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 the ability to be able to be civil with one another under most applications. But when you are around someone who is seriously under pressure, and they're stressed out and they're freaked out. And that's when you really get to know who they are. So I, as a play on that, I said, uh, your best friends are the ones who have been proven in the furnace of affliction. You've been around them when they've been under stress and in trouble and pressure, pressured. You really know more about them than you did before. Pressure. Yeah, and it, it, that's, yeah it's, it's, it's a good character reveal. And just like that, somebody that's, you know, that's why a lot of the military guys are always so close after they went right. through something traumatic. 
Uh, you know, I've never done that, but I've certainly had the same kind of experience with line work where, you know, just going through the sucky moments and how terrible some things can be and just the long days and long hours and being away from your family, you, you definitely get close to those people. Mm -hmm. And it's nice when they go through it with you uh, just because you know how they react to certain things. Mm -hmm. And that was the next thing that I'd written down was that, you know, the about the people who will wear you down when you're around them. Preach that. The name Philistine. Look it up. I, I, I did some word studies this week and I was really enthralled by it. The word Philistine literally means grievers, weakeners to wear you down. And so there are people like that in your life that when you're around them, come on, y'all talk to us. We see you out there. They grieve you, they weaken you, and they wear you down. Evil associations corrupt good manners. They wear you out. There are people in your life who bring you happiness. There are people that make you happy. The more time you spend around them, the better off you feel. But, and I said this, I said, <laughs> some of you know some Philistines, even though you don't know them by that name. They have the uncanny ability to be able to pull the strength out of your life. And I think there was a little bit of a roar in here. Uh-huh. Somebody said, amen. Uh, do you know people like that? They have the uncanny ability to pull the, the joy out of your life. Hey, Jessica. Thank look you, at, Jessica. Hey, thank you for being there. That's, that's a first. She actually, I want to give her a shout out. She did the same thing on Sunday. So thank you. That is, that is awesome. We, we definitely greatly appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, with the wearing you down thing, which mm -hmm. is the same thing with line work. I remember being on... Uh, some crews where you had one person like that, that was just, you know, I don't know if it was the stress or if it was just the kind of person they were where they're just always negative. Some people are. And, you know, you show up to work, you know, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., and you're trying to be positive. And there's always just that one person that's like, no matter what is mm -hmm. going on, no matter what you're doing, they're just always completely negative and you know, if you're not careful and you're not committed to your joy, to your joy and trying to stay in a good mood, they will just immediately wear you down and bring you down. And it, and it's funny too with the Philistine thing, how they were the weakeners and they wear down. I made that real uh, this morning mm -hmm. about Exodus thirteen seventeen, where it said, "When Pharaoh mm -hmm. let the people go, God did not lead them, the Israelites, on the road through the Philistine country, even though that way was shorter." God said if they face war, they might change their minds and return to yep. Egypt. So mm -hmm. obviously he knew, which, um, you know, we read the Bible and you know it, that they get worn down. So it was interesting that God mm -hmm. didn't lead them through the shorter path because mm -hmm. it would have worn them down. He took them mm -hmm. to a place. That's where, one of my favorite stories in that journey. Where they had to, they had no choice but to Man, trust him. He knew, because we would, by instinct, we would take the easier route. Yeah, and it's not always the best choice. We always mm -hmm. want the short, that's why I said it, we want shortcuts instead of salvation. We want the quickest way to get through something. And God's like, no, let's go around it. You got a little bit more stuff to learn. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he brings you to a place. He brings you to just like the Red Sea where you're stuck between water and a hard place. You're mm -hmm. stuck between somebody that's wanting to kill you and you've got nowhere else to go. And that is the perfect, God will always get his glory. He will always set it up to get his glory, to get his praise to show his character, to show himself off, to show his glory so he gets his glory. So he brought them not through the quickest route, but the route that would put them in a place where they had nowhere else to go other than to completely and fully trust him. And he made a path where there was no path before. He made a way where there was no way before. He split that's the good. sea and that's let him walk word. through. Gone, through that's a good word because ground. I think as a church, that's where we are right now. They're, they're, it, he's gonna have to make a way where there is no way to make well, that's all the this. only way it's just I'm in like a weird I, I get my my stress and the stuff that's attacking me is I can tell it's all designed to come against the purpose and everything but when I'm thinking of when I think of the church and where the church is going and the land I had I had zero doubt that we are getting and we're getting the land uh, and you know, the thing is like, if it's a no, then God has something better than mine. Yeah. I just, I, I, I know the vision that God has given me for the church mm -hmm. and it's just, I've never had faith like that in my life before. It's just, I know that no matter what comes and how bad it looks, God is, is orchestrating everything behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so I just, it's just like a, I, it's unwavering in me that mm -hmm. we're going to end up where we're going to end up. 
and I don't know how or when, but it's just I, I know he, he is he is making a way and he's not stopping. That's I, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I probably sound like a raving lunatic. Not but, at all. Um, no, there's there's big sense. things. There's big things for Family Church, and he is. Well, those things are already are, a lot of those things are already happening. Uh, we talked about Sunday, uh, and we'll regress just for a minute back to the, the service. Um, at that service, there was a young man in here who came up, and uh, he just said, "I just want to shake your hand." And it was an altar call. Believe it, church. We still have altar calls. Um, let's make altar calls great again. Uh, he came walking over to me, said, I just want to shake your hand. And I said, great, thank you. And he said, I appreciate the sermon and blah, blah, blah. And I, I just did my normal question. If you talk to me, it's coming. I said, how's everything with you and God right now? And he said, well, you know, it, I'm working on that. And I, you know, I need to get right with him. I know I do. And I said, come with me. And I walked him over to J.D., who's our Baptist preacher on our pastoral care team. And J.D. led him to Christ right there that morning. He gave, gave his heart to the Lord and got it right with God. And he was here Monday night at the uh, oh, Holy Spirit cool. class. So he's he's pressing in. Uh, a lady with a wheelchair, she walked over and she walked over. She rolled over in her wheelchair. And I walked over and said, what can we pray for you about? And she said, I want to walk. And I said, well, have you, you said been walking? Over, and she said, no. And she said, no, I have not. So I said, well, let's go. And she got up and took a few steps and walked from over to the side, over to the center aisle and sat down. Uh, great things are kicking on. And I think we're at the very beginning of what's about to happen. That's why um, the crazy faith thing that I've been talking mm -hmm. to you about, I know whatever your opinion on Mike Todd is, the crazy faith book, I haven't made it all the way through. It's really good. <clears throat> the sermon he preached on it is phenomenal mm -hmm. i listened i sent it to you yeah. and it, it got me so hyped that's and with his story that was his story um and yes there's been you know some some funky things but you know we're all human we've all made mistakes we're all sinners i'm not gonna bash anybody but the story of transformation in in mike todd's church um it was founded by a white pastor mm -hmm. that god led him into a super predominant black neighborhood uh, to start a church. And so he actually told Mike Todd's parents to come visit. They heard God tell them to move. And then, so it was there for however long it was there. And then he was a music producer. He felt God leading him to be the next lead pastor. Uh, and then obviously, you know, it's blown up. And he had the one night um, or morning where he felt God giving him the vision for the church. And he, you know, he wrote down on a piece of paper that the city bank spirit set, whatever it was, some giant arena was going to be their next building. And, uh, you know, he just had the faith to believe it. And, and took five years. And it, and five years later, they got it out from under, uh, they had a big conglomerate, somebody or something that wanted to buy it. Their David financing Busters. fell through. Was it, yeah, it was like yeah, a David, David Busters, Busters kind of thing. Yeah. That all fell through. They ended up getting the church. It was a $50 million building that is now a church. I don't know what they paid for it. And then they've got, I don't, I don't know what they paid for their, you know, AVL install and repurposing, whatever. I'd love to visit it. It looks phenomenal as a building. But he had the faith to trust God and believe in it. And, you know, all through that is just the, one, the crazy story of, and, he, and, and in that thing, in the sermon, the point that I just spent all that time trying to make, is I feel like with faith, we have let it take a back seat too much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. instead of having crazy faith or instead of having faith in general, we've just kind of slipped back and, you know, we believe God for, you know, whatever, and we'll show up and get our little revelations and all that. He, he, he talked about, you know, when's the last time when you had a headache that you prayed to God about it? Or do you instantly reach for the Tylenol mm -hmm. or the ibuprofen? And I heard that and I was like, yeah, yeah, you got me there because it's too often, you know, you're like, oh, I got a headache. Let me take some medicine. And instead of praying to God and having faith. I pray because I don't like medicine. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying it's you can relate that to so yeah, much. There's just definitely. so much stuff that we have just let our faith kind of turn into lack. Well, I've said it honestly here. Not trust it. When we started talking about all this, I've told you and I've, I've told this congregation, uh, I got to that place where it was very comfortable for me. Uh, to do what I do and to be who I am. I mean, a great location, big building, full, paid for, easy. And you just kind of slide into that. 
And then, you know, one day you, you get shook. You get shook. I don't know if that's a real word, but God shakes you and says, that's not what I have for you and, and reawakens yeah. something in you. And that's a powerful thing. That reminds me, uh, <laughs> and I don't mean to go this route, but um, which church was it in Revelation that Jesus was coming against for mm -hmm. uh, forgetting? The, Revelation your, 3. Forgetting. You are rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. I say to you that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Revelation chapter three. Yeah, they were just kind of. I'm not lukewarm. saying that's what happened here, but, no, but it, it when, could easily. You could go from that's on fire to lukewarm that quick. Um, and we've been in this church bef before you came back for about two years. We were have been praying solid for revival. God revive us. God revive us. Well, when a revival breaks, we've got 400 seats. You're not going to be able to. I'll take the seats out. And we'll sit on the floor. We'll need. We'll need. It. So <laughs> well, no, that's room, why. That's, That's why, why we're, we're suddenly getting 60 acres of land yep. and uh, however many seats. I don't want to put a number on it yet because I'm, I have one in my head, but I don't know if it's too small. Back to the sermon from Sunday. <laughs> a lot of good conversation in the chats tonight. We haven't, Jared's all on a roll here. We haven't talked to y'all much, but a lot of the quotes in the uh, YouTube area are phenomenal. Thank you for that. And everybody in the uh, Facebook area, crazy faith. Pressure yeah. exposes it and brings you to the end of yourself. One of the things you had written down or you had talked about was the hard days are never meaningless. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, it, what popped in my head was the thing, the, the, I don't know if it's a quote or whatever of the different cycles of society mm -hmm. and how the first one that goes with that is hard times make hard men. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, you there's like me. different levels. There's the hard times make hard men, mm -hmm. hard men take, make good times or something <coughs> bad times make uh good men good men create easy times easy times create soft men soft men create hard times yeah it's kind of that variation of that that's why exactly the, the yeah. hard times make hard men hard men make good times good times make weak men weak mm -hmm. men make hard times and it's just a cycle it's a cycle so that's what popped into mind that and it's it just goes back to that that the hard days are never meaningless nobody said life is going to be easy. Um, <coughs> and even in the Christian faith, I, I don't know if people just somehow we get this thing that when you accept Jesus, everything's going to be all all right and it's all going to be perfect. And Well, the current culture in the, the most uh, predominantly in the Christian church has brought us to that place where if you are you're walking right and you're living right, you're blessed and everything's good and you just, you just live a blessed life and you have a bigger house and a better car and all of that. Nothing wrong with that, but that's the, the end all of it all. Uh, I think if we were walking by faith, uh, you're trusting God and you're reaching, pressing to do something more. Well, that's the false thinking of Job's friends. Mm -hmm. They all thought, mm -hmm. oh, you, you must have sinned greatly. That's why you're being persecuted. Right. And then, you know, Job was saying it, it, it's a twofold story. It was it's interesting when you really dive into it about how, you know, Job's friends thought that he had sinned. So, you know, God punishes the wicked and he blesses the righteous. So that's why Job was being cursed and everything was falling apart for him. And, you know, Job hadn't done anything, but he did have that deep rooted self-righteousness. So mm -hmm. God had used it to, you know, expose Job's self-righteousness and also used it to kind of expose and rebuke the false thinking of his friends, mm -hmm. which is also a good testament of, you know, you should really pay attention to who you're around. And sometimes <laughs> uh, some of your friends just need to shut their mouths because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't mind. Troubles are the tools in a much larger story than the one that is actually happening. That was the next thing I wrote down, but I had written it down wrong because you had like, it was, it, one of those, it was one of those, I wish you had said it twice. All right. Troubles are tools in a much larger story than the one that is actually happening. Whether you create it or the devil created it, it doesn't matter. Troubles are going to come and tr but troubles are the tools that uh, are used in a much larger story than the one that you're dealing with right now. The king, King Achish, whose, names mean, whose name means it is what it is, gave David a city named Ziklag, which is a place of pressure uh, that reveals what is really, to press someone or something to reveal what is inside. So that city began to accomplish its purpose and it pressed in on David, it pressed on his men, his men became murderous, but David said, the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord, showing that what was really inside of him was this heart for God that, that God knew was always there Anyway, no matter what, no matter how far he fell or how far he ran, his heart for God was always there. And so the pressure 
that happened in his life was the tool in a much larger story that brought him back to his original place of a heart for God. That's what I love, too, about David is that he is literally noted as a man after God's heart. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it, like any other human being on the planet, he had his faults, he had his, his stumbles and his trip-ups and his failures, but he had such a burning passion and desire mm-hmm. for God's holiness, for God's greatness. I mean, that's why you know, he stood up to Goliath mm-hmm. when everybody else was mm-hmm. too cowardly to do anything about it. He cared so much about honoring God right. that as a boy, he went and stood up against a giant. I mean, that, and that's that's walking in, in faith, in crazy faith. He didn't care anything about the reward of the no taxes and marrying the, the daughter or any of that. He just was stood. He just stood up for the honor of God. And when we do that, something great's going to happen. So, Kathy, in both chats, the quote that stayed with me all week: "The troubles are the tools in a much larger story God is using to rebuild what is inside of us." Apparently, that spoke to all of us the same. See, I had misheard it. And I wrote down, troubles are the tools in the story that point to something greater. That'll work. That works too. Which is a same a little play basic. on it. Mm-hmm. It's the same basic thing. So. so while we're getting close to the end, so we can have some fun with this one, <laughs> is uh, I had written down, you know, pressure has power, but not rejoicing when your enemies fall. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was a great moment um, when David made the decision to call the priest and have him pray that revealed that David had substantially changed he was a new man he was changed in a different direction so he asked God what to do God says go recover everything after that he comes back and, and things begin to settle down a, a little bit but then he gets word that his enemy not David's enemy but the enemy of David King Saul is dead and David the Bible says that David was heartbroken he cried He cried over that. And so there's a reminder to us that um, you should not rejoice when your enemies fall. According to David, Saul was God's anointed. And David, you know, several times had the opportunity to kill Saul Mm -hmm. and did not do it. And his men were like, what are you doing? Kill him. And David said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. Lord, don't you wish people in the world understood that today? And in the church, right? Leave the anointed alone. But then... um, He didn't rejoice, he was grieved, but then that became the catalyst that catapulted David to the crown. He became the king. So don't rejoice. Solomon said, don't rejoice when your enemy falls or God will withhold the judgment and God will restore them because your your heart is not right. So yeah, that's a great, great point. That makes me think too, not to keep hijacking everything, but I was reading it today. Uh, Philippians... Chapter 2, um, when Paul's talking about how, I'll find it, I'll find it, I'll find it. Um, maybe it's chapter 1. While he's looking, y'all are dropping a lot of quotes in there. We're glad to have you all here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you didn't join us from the very beginning, you're watching The Family Room. We're, this is where we break down the sermon from Sunday. While he's still searching for that, I'm working already on this Sunday. We'll tell you what it's about in just a few minutes. That one. Philippians 1. Uh, 15 to 18. Is it true that some preach Christ Mm -hmm. out of envy and rivalry? It is true. Sorry, I said, is it true? But others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. Gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Mm -hmm. I think that is an awesome thing that the church should get back to Mm. with that is, you know, you talk about how, you know, touch not thy anointed kind of thing where everybody just wants to attack everybody Mm -hmm. within the church. And as long as they're still preaching, you know, biblically sound Mm -hmm. teaching, Mm -hmm. or if the church is, is still leading people to Jesus, and the church is still converting people to Jesus and they're putting their faith in Jesus, then what does it matter? That'd be a great topic to talk about on a family room night. Just people in their tongues. You, you did a reel a couple of weeks ago. People just need to shut their mouths and stop talking trash about one another. Uh, 
Can I just, I can't, I, I, maybe it's my fault for reading comments too much. I do enjoy seeing what people have to contribute to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't find those contributions without finding uh, the chaos that people want to throw at churches. And I've just got such a, a burning uh, <laughs> bitterness to make it rhyme. I don't really know what to call it. I can't stand the fact that uh, righteous indignation. Instead of just being like, "Wow, I don't like the way this guy preaches. Mm -hmm. I don't really agree too much with what he says." Uh, you know, they they just make it their whole goal to attack and slander and come don't against listen to this guy. He's all a false that. teacher, exactly. false prophet. And it's like, if their church is leading people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we're always going to have right points there. of what doctrine. Does it matter? As we're always going to have Jesus points of doctrine preached. that we disagree on. Uh, I don't know anyone that I agree with every single thing that they do or say. So we're all going to have points of doctrine that we disagree with. As long as they're not blasphemous and as long as they are preaching the true gospel of Jesus and they're leading people to Christ. I, my dad and mom taught me that years ago. Just You don't talk about God's people. You just leave that to, to God and let him work that well, out. You lead, you lead. You read the Bible long enough, you're going to find something that stings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to find something that you're like, oof. And I mean, the, the instant one that comes to mind is when Jesus talks, or yeah, when Jesus talks about praying for your enemies. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5. Who, who wants to do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that person hates me. Like David, Saul is out mm -hmm. to kill me, and then he's heartbroken when Saul dies. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, how many people. Uh, That's the true heart. You want to pray God. for the enemies. You want to pray for um, lying leaders, whether they're in positions of. Mm -hmm. power over the country or at your job or whatever it's so often we don't want to pray for our enemies or people that we don't like and it's just yeah that's what I'm saying. it's just i don't know i'm not going to get on another rant pray for your leaders <laughs> pray for the presidents pray for the congress people that we disagree with pray for all of that that's a good reminder that's a good reminder because somebody pointed out sunday that i gave a a scathing remark about the current resident in the white house uh I don't back away from that. I don't back away from that because it's what I believe. I believe what I believe. But I do pray for him, and I pray for all of them. I pray that God will be once again exalted in this nation. I believe that uh, all of this that we are going through as a nation right now is happening on purpose, with a purpose, that God will be exalted. I think that we had to get in such difficult times so that we turn our hearts back to God. This nation... As a whole, we're, we're feeling it, and we're seeing a revival take place in people who have walked away from God, who are saying, you know, I've got to get back to my faith, and we have got to restore some values and morality in our country. So if, if all of the hell that we've had to walk through the last couple of years has been for that, then it's been worth it. For sure. I mean, there is, obviously, there's a big um, falling away mm -hmm. from Christianity, but there's also, at the same time, seems to be, I really, you can kind of feel it, like a big revival is yep. coming, just a massive, I mean, you're looking at people, um, you know, celebrities, you've got Hulk Hogan, uh, what's the other one? Kat Dad, Von D. Daddy, yeah, Kat, Kat Von D, Daddy Yankee, or whatever that one guy's name was, I don't know, the one guy. Rapper. Yeah, some rapper. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't know all the ones that are coming across, but there's well, what obviously we've talked a huge about. thing. And you've given me some reels on this is that that God is going to occupy churches that are preaching the gospel. I mean, he's going to fill those buildings up. And the ones that are not, I saw a, a, a black pastor that he preached an entire sermon on the reason a lot of churches are closing. I, I don't know where I saw it, but there, some of them are closing because God himself has said, you're not preaching my gospel. So the blessing that was going to be here is not here. But the place where God's blessing is, those places, I believe, are, are going to see revival. They're going to fill back up. We're living it right now. Exactly. It's separating the wheat from the chaff. Mm -hmm. God will get his glory. And, you know, there's only, even with, with false doctrine or whatever else the case may be, uh, God is patient. But obviously, eventually, the patience runs out. And so there's only so much that can be stored up before it gets poured out. Mm -hmm. And the, just like that, I mean, there's, I don't, any number of churches, and if they're not going to be biblically sound, eventually God's going to cut them off. Yep. A lot of great comments. Y'all are, y'all are blowing it up tonight. I wish that we had y'all right here in the room with us and we could have this conversation. Uh, I think we should. One, one Sunday we need to do, maybe not like family room, but we could have uh, the couches or something. Would y'all want to see that? You've mentioned it before, a tag team kind of preaching thing. No. 
You don't want to do that? You think that'd be awesome? Not on a Sunday. I think on a Wednesday, maybe we could invite people to come and sit oh, and join us. Wimp. Are you limiting God what He can do? No, I'm limiting the chaos that could result. <laughs> no, not no. I'm not saying taking comments from people. <laughs> that could uh, be like I'm not. Saying that, that would be a live kind of Wednesday night for people in for the family room thing. Major on the main. I'm saying like a Sunday morning where we just tag teamed. Well, message. I've said that for a while. We should do that because there's something dynamic that happens when you you give and take and things like that. We have to plan that out and put that in motion. But anyway, our time we'll together is just about complete for tonight. Um, the sermon was about pressure. I pray that it was a blessing to you guys that it helped you, that you've learned and grown, and and the pressure that you're under. It's bringing it's something. It's doing even if the devil has brought it, it's going to bring about God's purpose. So just. Stay in like the, the refinery, the, the crucible, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. when gold is melted down so the impurities mm -hmm. rise to the surface and get cut off. It's going to work. And so Sunday, coming up, this coming Sunday, um, I'm going to follow that up. I have a second second line to go after with that um, that I truly believe is, is a word that's going to be helpful for everybody. So don't miss it. Make sure you get here early. Uh, don't forget about the, uh, the brunch for the uh, children's workers. If you're a children's worker, Plan to stay for a little bit after service. We have a brunch prepared for you. We're gonna say thank you for the hard work that you guys do for us. And if you're interested in serving in the children's church, show up and, and come and, and be a part of that. It's gonna be a good day. Sunday's gonna be a good day. It's always what, a good what day. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to uh, all the stuff that we're about to roll out that we can't announce yet, and I hate that. <laughs> but I am ready for it. No, I'm looking for it. Sunday's always good. Um, I'm just looking forward to it. Sunday, I'm preaching on this little two-word phrase, help comes. If you want to get ahead of everything, read Psalms 121. That's all I'm going to tell you. Kathy Cochran, revival fire fall on us. Burn up what doesn't belong and breathe fresh fire on us. Hey, that's why you should have been in here tonight. Let's bring back. We need Kathy and Kelsey in here. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> She's been mighty quiet tonight. Yeah. You almost have the girls. Probably, yeah, they've got, she's got them there. She's you probably could always cooking tell. dinner. <laughs> probably cooking dinner. Uh, but yeah, no, Sunday, um, you're preaching on that. Help comes. Hopefully I'll take the next week. Mm -hmm. I have a message on anxiety. And so far, all that's happening Woo. is I'm getting anxiety about how to uh, lay it out into a sermon. So yeah, it'll come together. It's great. That's what you said. Uh, the, the preacher is, <laughs> it comes to us first and we have to deal with it before it goes out. So. Yay. <laughs> Happy to have all of y'all in here tonight. We're so thankful for you. Lisa, it's been good a great, to see you. great time. It's been a great time tonight. together. Heather Sugar, good to see you. Hope everything is going well. Frankie Hollers, uh, great sermon last Sunday. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. Kathy Murray, always good to see you. We missed you Sunday. Uh, you called her out. You look right. I thought you were here. I thought you were going to be in St. Augustine. I called you straight out. So she's kind of our online room monitor on Facebook up there in Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. She, if you notice, Kathy does this. She takes the sermon notes and drops my quotes in the sermon oh, in oh, the no. chat. Thank you for that. That matters. It gets it keeps people interested, and it's it's interesting that's for cool. me when I go back and watch it afterwards. So that's always a cool. lot of great things going on. So we can't tell them anymore. I don't think so. Ah, we we got the contracts on the land. Uh, we're rolling some things out. Sunday, he's got a great new giving way that you can help with that. Y'all pray, pray, pray. Uh, what's interesting is we were talking about how the the attorney has uh, reached out to the county to now we've got 10 days from right now to get this all pulled together uh, to tell us if we can use it. While we were talking, he was Don't calling you. me. Yeah, I showed self restraint, didn't answer the phone. Well, that's a good thing. I wanted to like watch these guys. Well, that's why we're gonna go. We gotta go. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank it's you for being here time. in the family room. We'll see you on Sunday. Make sure you come early. Early. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.